Let's write a C program to find greatest common divisor or highest common factor of two positive integer numbers input by the user using Euclid's algorithm and by using recursive function called concept. If you are new to GCD and Euclid's algorithm, please follow the link present on your computer screen. We have shown the iterative way of doing it that is finding GCD of two numbers using Euclid's algorithm. So with that, let's continue our recursive function logic using Euclid's algorithm. So if user enters two numbers, n1 and n2, according to Euclid's algorithm, if n1 is greater than n2, reduce the value of n1 by writing n1 modulo division n2 and replace it with the value of n1, okay? Assume that we have a function called gcd. If we pass two numbers, it returns gcd of those two numbers. So let's pass n1 modulo division n2 comma n2 to it. It's equal to passing n1 comma n2. We just need to reduce the greatest number by modulo dividing it by the smallest number. So in, in case n2 is greater than n1, what if n2 is greater than n1? Simple. We need to pass n2 modulo division n1 instead of n2 in place of n2. Okay. So we need to recursively call gcd until either n1 or n2 becomes 0. At some point, either n1 or n2 will become 0. So if n1 is 0, then gcd is whatever is present inside n2. And if n2 is 0, then gcd is equal to whatever the value is present inside variable n1. So this is Euclid's algorithm logic. So we will be using all these in our program. So write this down and we will write the C program now. If you didn't understand, don't worry, I'll explain once again while writing the code, okay? Let's get started. So I'll take a variable, two variables, n1 and n2, and I, I'll ask the user to input two integer numbers, two positive integer numbers, and store it inside the address of integer variables, num1 and num2. So let me write a printf statement directly and call our function gcd inside the printf itself. So gcd of percentage %d and percentage %d is, so percentage %d and percentage %d represents the numbers n1 and n2, is percentage %d. The last percentage %d is the return value of our function gcd, okay? So we need to pass num1 and num2 to gcd. Now let me define this function here. So we need to return integer type. So its return type should be integer. We are getting two arguments here. So let me take two variables to receive those numbers. I'll call it n1 and n2. So num1 will be copied to n1, num2 will be copied to n2. So now let us check if n1 is greater than n2. So that's the logic we discussed, right? That's the Euclid algorithm also. So in that case, I'll, I'll return something, okay? What will I return? I'll recursively call gcd method here and reduce the value of n1 by writing n1 modulo division n2 because here n1 is greater than n2. So in place of n1, I'll write n1 modulo division n2 and in, in n2's place, I'll write n2. So else, that means n2 is greater than n1. In that case, I'll reduce the value of n2 by n2 modulo division n1. That's it. So at, at some point of time in this recursive call, either num1 or num2 will become zero. So let me write the base condition here to exit the loop. So if n1 is zero, then we return the value of n2, okay? We discussed it earlier. If n2 is equal to zero, then return the value of n1. So whatever is present inside n1 will be the GCD if n2 is zero, okay? So GCD will be n2 if n1 is zero. Hope you get this logic. I'll explain you once again, don't worry. But before that, let us check this program if it's working properly. So let me run it. I'll give 15 and 20. The GCD should be five and it's working. So let me copy these lines of code. Wait, let me copy the whole function itself. That is GCD. And let me explain how it's working. 
so let me paste it here i'll bring this down so that you can view it properly so assume that n1 is 1980 user has entered value of n1 as 1980 and n2 as 1617 so these uh, gcd of 1980 comma 1617 will be passed from main both are not equal to 0, n1 is not equal to 0, n2 is not equal to 0. Next line, if n1 is greater than n2, yes, that's true. So this line of code gets executed. So let me paste it here. Let me substitute the value of n1 and n2. So n1 is 1980, n2 is 1617, n2 is in two places. So let me substitute it in two places. So 1980 modulo division, 1617. You can use your calculator, uh, its result is 363, okay? So again recursively call GCD with new values of N1, N1 is equal to 363 and N2 is equal to 1617. So let's call the function once again. So N1 is not equal to 0, N2 is not equal to 0. The next line of code, if N1 is greater than N2, no that's not true because n2 is greater so this line of code in else block gets executed so let me paste this here let me replace the values of n1 and n2 so we have n1 in two places here and n2 in one place here now what is the value of 1617 modulo division 363 it's 165 okay 165 yeah right so again recursively call the function gcd with the new values of n1 is equal to 363 and n2 is equal to 165 again pass it to the function gcd n1 is not equal to 0 n2 is not equal to 0 if n1 is greater than n2 yes it's true so this line of code gets executed so again let me replace the values of num1 and num2 so we have num2 in two places here. Let me substitute the values. So 363 modulo division 165. It's 33. Okay, 363 modulo division 165 is 33. So again, call GCD recursively with the new values of n1 as 31 and n2 is equal to 165. Once again, call the function n1 is not 0, n2 is not 0, okay. Next condition, if n1 is greater than n2, no, that's wrong. So else condition code gets executed. This one, this line of code. So substitute the value of n1 and n2. n1 is 33, it's in two places. So n2 value is in one place, so substitute it. So what's the reminder for 165 modulo division 33 i guess 33 into 5 is 163 so modulo division returns 0 so let us divide it and see 165 divided by not modulo division it's just the division okay 5 so 33 into 5 is 165 so it perfectly divides it and it returns a reminder of 0 Okay, again recursively call GCD method with the new values n1 is equal to 33 and n2 is equal to 0. Okay, let's check the logic. It enters the function n1 is not equal to 0, it's 33, n2 is equal to 0. Yes, n2 is equal to 0. So this line of code gets executed, which is return n1. So let me paste it here. What is n1? n1 is 33. Okay, return 33 to the calling function which is gcd of 33 comma 0. Replace it. So again return it to the calling function. Again return it to the calling function. This will be returned to the calling function and this will be returned to the main function where gcd of 1980.1617 is called. So inside um, main method gcd of 1980 and 1617 is an is oops 33 will be printed so all the instances and memory associated with those instances of gcd will be 
popped out or deleted from the stack and only this output remains on the console window. Hope you understood this logic of this recursive function GCD. So let me complete this by writing the prototype of this function. So let me cut this and paste it after main method. I even prefer to remove these variable names. These are optional. You need not even remove it. Okay. So this completes. So this is function call. Okay. This is function prototype and this is called function definition. So let me compile and run this once again. So I'll give 1980 as n1 and 1617 as n2. So its GCD should be 33 and it's working. That's great. So please visit the link present in the description section of this YouTube video for source code notes and discussion about this topic. Stay subscribed to our YouTube channel and blog. And please share this video with your friends using WhatsApp, Telegram, WeChat, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And please do not forget to like this video on YouTube. Thank you.